And welcome to the Cathedral of St. Peter. Our processional hymn can be found in the Red Worship Books, number 618, O Christ the Great Foundation, number 618 in the Red Worship Books. Please rise. <laughs> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Spirit. Every Mass is a moment of joy. The Eucharist is a source of thanksgiving, but we have a particular reason for our gathering this evening and for our particular thanksgiving. For weeks now, throughout the world, throughout the Church, and here in Rockford, we have prayed for the guidance of the Holy Spirit in the selection of a new successor to St. Peter. We come to gather this evening because that gift has been given. And like the lepers who are cured, it is right after receiving the gift for us to return to Christ and offer our thanks. And that in a particular way is what we do this evening. I'm so grateful for Bishop Dorn for gracing us with his presence that we may offer together our prayers for the Holy Father, my brother priests, all of you who have made the effort at the end of a working Monday on a kind of a gloomy afternoon here, how good it is for us to give our thanks. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Christ eleison, Christ eleison, Kyrie eleison. Let us pray. O God, who in your providential design willed that your church be built upon blessed Peter, whom you set over the other apostles, look with favor, we pray, on Francis our Pope, and grant that he whom you made Peter's successor may be for your people a visible source and foundation of unity in faith 
and of communion. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, I exhort the presbyters among you as a fellow presbyter and witness to the sufferings of Christ and one who has a share in the glory to be revealed. Tend the flock of God in your midst, overseeing not by constraint, but willingly, as God would have it, not for shameful profit, but eagerly. Do not lord it over those assigned to you, but be examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd is revealed, you will receive the unfading crown of glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to
with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus went into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said in reply, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus said to him in reply, blessed are you Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly father. And so I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. It's sometimes remarked that in our lowering culture that we live in, one of the signs of that is how little people say please and thank you. It used to be such a sign of pride and we teach it even now to our children to say please and then to say thank you when the gift has been received. And the point is not simply that thank you of the moment. It is an act of gratitude for something that has been given that need not have been given. And so it is all the more gratefully received because it is a gift. And it is not enough to receive the gift at the moment, but then in thanks to accept the gift and go forward with respect for the gift and the meaning of the gift that's been given. We're here this evening because in keeping with Christ's promise, we have received a gift. And for most of us, this is a gift that in what we've been through this past week will only happen a few times in our lifetime. The fulfillment, not just of history, but of faith itself. We've just heard the gospel and the fact that 2,000 years ago on a hillside, as Christ was looking forward to what would happen after what we will celebrate next week, his death and his resurrection, and then ultimately his ascension to the Father leaving us in the midst of grace and the world to continue out his work, he appointed witnesses for himself. Witnesses to strengthen our faith. He appointed in particular those 12 apostles. And their task was to witness even if necessary, and for most it became necessary, to the witness of blood itself in order to keep us close to Christ, close to that friendship with Christ, true to the faith and the teaching and the sacraments that Christ left among us. 
And then in the midst of those 12, that it was not enough, we heard of the gospel. One whose humanity was selected for this particular responsibility. Bearing the keys of the kingdom, binding and loosing for our salvation in accordance with the mind and the heart of Christ. There's been a lot of parallels these last several weeks to what we just heard in the gospel. Christ begins by saying, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And we begin to hear signs of confusion. He's one of the prophets. He's John the Baptist. He's many things. Perhaps confusion, perhaps agendas, perhaps people who haven't been listening quite close enough. And you, who do you say that I am? And because of grace and because of God's own intervention through a human instrument of Peter. The truth of the identity of Christ himself becomes clearer. You are the Christ, the son of the living God. Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. And so I say to you that you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. These past weeks, in a sense, we've heard an echo of Christ's question and the response that was given. We've heard so many efforts to describe what we've watched over the last several weeks. Is this the time that finally the church will change its faith? Is it a time that it will finally modernize itself? Is it a time that it will drop this, that, and the other in order to conform to our faith, to our time, to our place, to our, our age? It is as if to say Christ himself didn't get it right 2,000 years ago. It is as if to say Christ has grown old and we have grown modern. And in the midst of that whole scenario, who do people say that I am? We began to see something that was different, something that really heartens our faith and reminds us of who and what we are. All of those talks that those successors to the apostles, those cardinals had, discussing among themselves, not agendas, not strategies, but faithful witness to the one who had called them. We're told that before that dramatic image of the cardinals moving from that one chapel, the Pauline Chapel, to their final entrance into the Sistine Chapel, the last time we saw them before the smoke came out, they had a talk reminding them that what had been entrusted to them was not a question of human reasoning, it was not a question of rivalries and solutions. It was a question, again, of faithful witness. And we saw them marching, and we heard the invocations of the saints to pray for their purity of heart, their purity of witness. Who of us wasn't moved watching one by one as they came up and placed their hand on the book of the gospel? to profess their effort to follow Christ and to fulfill that task that had been entrusted to them. And then the doors closed. And we heard all of the prognostications. And yet for probably any one of us here, when Pope Francis stepped out onto that balcony, it was in a sense not one that we might have expected. But here again, is it not a sign of our faith? The Holy Spirit working through the humanity and the magnificent efforts of those entrusted with this task to bring forth a man 
whose first effort has been to show us again the simplicity of Christ himself. He who became poor among us to show us the way in fidelity to the Father. And he took the name of Francis. Francis of Assisi, he's told us. That's something that has a depth that will resonate as we go forward. It is easy to look at the story of Francis of Assisi, that poor, happy, sort of religious vagabond who did so much to restore the love and joy of the church, but he did more. He began in a dilapidated church, hearing the voice of God himself saying, Francis, come build up my church. As you can see, it is falling. And he gave himself, not just to the building of that small building, but to the renewal of faith that led to the strength, and the wisdom, and the faith of others, following Christ, following Christ in a manner that brought them back not only to a humanistic care of the poor, but following it in faith and love for Christ himself. We've seen the images already of this new Holy Father pointing back to Christ, his simplicity walking out into the crowds, his selflessness already on display. But he's already had several points of message in some sense, they're not new, but Christ's message is never new. It is always repeated to strengthen us. The first thing he said at the Mass that he had after his election was not just be a follower of Christ, but he told us to have the courage to be a follower of Christ. That is something that is added on even more. We could, in a sense, be a follower of Christ, following the crowd, and doing so joyfully and well. But for each of us, there comes a point of acceptance. There comes a point of courage to truly accept Christ and to live the faith that has been entrusted to us. Then he said, do not be afraid. Do not give in to discouragement. Do not give in to pessimism. Do not give in to bitterness. As we look around at all of the challenges to faith, as we look around to the fact that frequently our witness will lead us into mockery, into ridicule, we might give in to thoughts of bitterness or thoughts of discouragement. But to follow Peter is to follow with a joyful heart it is to follow him strongly with gratitude. Just as the Lord told him, Peter, when you have recovered, you must give strength to your brothers and sisters. So throughout the ages, the Holy Fathers give strength to us, the brothers and sisters of Christ. We're here this evening in gratitude, and we are here because we have every reason to be proud of what has happened over the last several weeks. We have prayed asking for the gift of a worthy successor to St. Peter and to those popes that we have known in recent decades. We are here because we have been given now that gift. It makes us proud. It makes us recognize this faith is ever worthy of any effort that we put into it. Pope Francis helps us again to renew that pride. And his message has been this. Christ is the Savior of the world. It is his Holy Spirit that guides the church, that has guided the work of the last several weeks. And ultimately, we are here today because it is the Holy Spirit that guides our hearts into gratitude and joy for the gift of the successor to Peter.
Let us now stand and offer our prayers and our petitions to our loving Father. For our newly chosen Pope Francis, may he be blessed with grace, humility, and patience, and be strengthened in his role upon the earth as the living sign of Christ, promoting peace and justice, unity and love. Let us pray to the Lord. For our newly elected Pope Francis, that we may join our voices together in mutual support, showing respect for his papacy, finding in him gentleness and openness to hear the voices of God's people, and strong and true as he infallibly interprets God's words in matters of faith and morals. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For our newly elected Pope Francis, that he be blessed with good health and a long life, and that through his sacred words and actions, inspire the faithful to stand strong with him as he faces the task of breaking down the barriers that divide us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our that our newly elected successor to St. Peter, Pope Francis, be filled with every grace, blessing, and strength needed to persevere in guiding the body of Christ and the zeal to carry out Christ's mission in the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord God. God. That Pope Francis become for the faithful a sign of renewed hope and joy in the church, as well as a soothing source of light and absolute faith to the faithful as we wander in a world filled with confusion, unrest, and doubt. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. God, our Father, we turn to you with hearts full of gratitude. Thank you for this gift of the successor to Peter and for the many gifts of grace that you shower upon us through our Catholic faith. Help us always to receive them reverently and gratefully. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our hymn during the preparation of the gifts can be found in the Blue Gather books, number 492, Here I Am, Lord, number 492 in the Blue Gather books.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, we pray, O Lord, with the offerings presented here, and govern with unfailing protection your holy church, together with Francis, our Pope, whom you've chosen to be her shepherd, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you, eternal shepherd, do not desert your flock, but through the blessed apostles, watch over it and protect it always so that it may be governed by those you have appointed shepherds to lead it in the name of your Son. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, David, our Bishop, be your unworthy servant and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and 
all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, and now forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with your spirit. spirit. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not holy to the sin of the
Our communion hymn can be found in the Blue Gather books, number 524, Make Me a Channel of Your Peace, number 524 in the Blue Gather books. Holy are you, rejoice, 
Let us pray. Having been made sharers at the heavenly table, we humbly entreat you, Lord, by the power of this mystery. Strengthen your church in unity and charity. And as you've entrusted your servant Francis with the office of shepherd, grant him always salvation and protection together with the flock entrusted to his care through Christ our Lord. Amen. We have for the last several weeks concluded the masses in this diocese in a prayer asking the Holy Spirit's guidance upon the process that has come to completion that begins tomorrow with the Mass of the Initiation of the Holy Father, which, by the way, will be on WREX even at 3.30 in the morning if anyone wishes to set their alarm. But let's also conclude with our prayer of gratitude as we have it here before us. O oh God, who in your providential design will that your church be built upon blessed Peter, whom you set over the other apostles Look with favor, we pray, on Francis, our Pope, and grant that he whom you've made Peter's successor may be for your people, a visible source and foundation of unity and, and communion. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now and forever. Our help is in the name of the Lord. May heaven and earth. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Lord is ended. Let us go now in peace. Thanks be to God. A recessional hymn can be found in the Red Worship Books, number 571. Faith of Our Fathers, number 571 in the Red Worship Books. Show.